In the beginning of this adventurous story, we are shown a magical forest where many different types of creatures used to roam. This place was completely different from the rest of the world. Inside that magical forest, we see a fairy named Maleficent. Maleficent had large wings and two horns, and she began her life in this magical forest. She had no idea about the world outside the jungle until now. Maleficent had never seen any humans inside the forest, only different types of magical creatures that humans might have never discovered. So, Maleficent considered this magical forest her home. But one day, a boy named Stephen accidentally entered the forest. Maleficent was surprised to see him. Stephen explained that he had come inside the forest after seeing a small diamond. Maleficent asks Stephen for the diamond and warns him that this forest could be dangerous for humans. Therefore, Maleficent took Stephen towards her kingdom. Stephen talks to Maleficent about leaving her safely, suggesting if they could meet again in the future. Maleficent agrees to this, but when Maleficent shakes hands with Stephen, she feels a sudden jolt because Stephen was wearing an iron ring on his finger. Maleficent's body becomes very weak around iron objects, so she tells Stephen to keep such items away from her. As time passes, a good friendship develops between them. Stephen always enjoys playing various games with Maleficent in the magical forest, and they both enjoy each other's company a lot. Along with time passing, Maleficent and Stephen start to develop feelings for each other. However, Maleficent knew nothing about humans, yet she trusted Stephen blindly. Many years passed with Stephen promising Maleficent that he would come to meet her again. But today, five whole years have passed and Stephen hasn't come. Maleficent becomes very angry about this, but continues to wait for him inside her magical forest. One day, the neighboring kingdom's king arrives with his entire army, intending to conquer the magical forest, as he wanted to control the entire forest. However, Maleficent did not want her forest to fall into the hands of the king. She immediately opens her large wings and stands in front of the king's army, clearly stating that no one can seize her forest. But the king insists that he doesn't need her permission and orders his soldiers to attack. However, Maleficent, being a fairy, possessed significant divine powers. With the help of her powers, Maleficent readied many soldiers within the magical forest, appearing like complete monsters. Now, all these creatures, together, began to attack the king's soldiers. The soldiers were so terrified that they started fleeing to save their lives because they couldn't fight these dangerous creatures. Maleficent also scared off the soldiers and fled from there. Now, the king, who was very injured, upon returning to his kingdom, informed everyone that many unique things could be found inside the magical forest. And now, the king had promised that if anyone were to bring an end to the fairy named Maleficent and marry his daughter, he would name the entire kingdom after that person. Although everyone in the kingdom was afraid to enter the forest, suddenly a man appears, who was none other than Stephen. Stephen had made the decision to become the new king by killing Maleficent. So, after so many years, Stephen walks into the magical forest. When Maleficent sees Stephen after such a long time, she becomes quite angry. She questions him about where he had been missing for so many years. Stephen makes up an excuse, saying that he had some important work to do, so he couldn't come here. Maleficent, being very forgetful, believes Stephen's words and now they both spend some good moments together. But Stephen's intentions were very wicked. He immediately gives Maleficent a poison drink, making her unconscious. Now Stephen, with a knife in his hand, goes to kill Maleficent. However, he couldn't do it for some reason, so in a state of unconsciousness, Stephen cuts off both of Maleficent's large wings. When Maleficent regains consciousness in the morning, she feels a lot of pain on her back. Later, it is found out that both of her wings have been cut off, and it was not done by anyone else but Stephen. Maleficent starts crying uncontrollably, while on the other hand, Stephen enters the kingdom with Maleficent's wings and hands them over to the king. The king thought that Stephen had killed Maleficent. Therefore, according to the promise, Stephen gets married to the king's daughter, and he becomes the new king of the entire kingdom. Stephen, in order to attain the throne, had become very ruthless. Now, Maleficent had become very weak due to the loss of her wings, 
and she spent her life wandering within her magical forest. Then, Maleficent saw a man who was trying to catch a crow. Using her magical powers, Maleficent converted that crow into a human, causing the hunter to flee in fear. The crow, now turned human, expressed gratitude to Maleficent because she had saved his life. Now, the crow decided that he would serve Maleficent for the rest of his life. The crow, upon Maleficent's suggestion, kept an eye on Stephen's actions in the kingdom. Maleficent came to know about Stephen's true intentions. He had done all these things only to attain the throne. Therefore, Maleficent completely lost her trust in humans. After marrying the princess, Stephen had a very dear daughter, and now all the people of the kingdom were coming to bless Stephen's daughter. But the surprising thing was that now Maleficent was also included among them, who came to Stephen's daughter and performed some magic, saying that she would be very beautiful in the future. But on her 16th birthday, she would be pricked by a needle, and she would fall into an eternal sleep. Stephen started begging Maleficent not to give this punishment to his daughter. Maleficent was very angry with Stephen, but she had a soft heart somewhere. So along with the curse, Maleficent added one more thing that when true love finds her daughter on her 16th birthday, she would wake up again. Saying this curse, Maleficent left from there. Now, Stephen wanted to save his daughter's life by any means possible. And then he gave his three little fairies to his daughter and said, Bring her to me only after her 16th birthday. Stephen, enraged by all these things, attacked the forest with his soldiers. However, in front of Maleficent's magical powers, they could not enter the forest. The three fairies were taking care of Stephen's daughter, whose name was Aurora, amidst the jungles. Aurora started considering them as her little daughter. Now, Aurora was about to turn 15 years old, meaning only one year was left for Maleficent's curse to be complete. Aurora was wandering in the jungle when she reached the place where the path was blocked by Maleficent. Aurora's curiosity also began to arise about all these things. She wanted to see what was behind all these things and what world existed outside the magical forest. That's when Aurora started hearing voices. So she said, Whoever you are, come in front of me. It was not someone else but Maleficent who was watching Aurora. Now, Maleficent stood in front of Aurora and Aurora, upon seeing Maleficent, said, You are the same woman who has been taking care of me since childhood. But why have you never come before me? I think you are my godmother who will always protect me. When Maleficent heard all these things from Aurora, she became very happy. Now, Aurora started living openly with Maleficent in the magical forest. Within a short period, Maleficent realized that Aurora was very good, and she wanted to stay with her forever. Aurora was standing by the side of a river in the forest when a very handsome prince suddenly appeared. When Aurora and the prince saw each other, they both started liking each other a lot. Aurora started talking to the prince, asking where he lived and whether they could meet again. Aurora had already returned to her house near the three fairies, telling them that she would go to Maleficent's after her 16th birthday. The three fairies felt that Aurora now knew everything, so they also started revealing all the things. Aurora realized that her real parents were still alive and the one she considered her godmother had actually cursed her. Aurora's trust in Maleficent had been broken, so she immediately left the magical forest and went directly to her father's kingdom. Aurora was very happy to meet Stephen after so many years, but Stephen could not understand what Aurora was doing here, because she had told the three fairies to bring her here only after her 16th birthday, and now there were only a few days left for Aurora's 16th birthday, after which Maleficent's curse would also come true. Therefore, the king orders his soldiers to lock Aurora in a room where she cannot leave. But Stephen had no idea how powerful Maleficent's curse was. Within a few days, Aurora's 16th birthday arrived, and Maleficent's dangerous curse began to take effect, started controlling Aurora, making her completely out of control. She left the chamber and entered a very large storeroom, where she picked up a sharp pin placed there by Maleficent. The dangerous curse placed by Maleficent was complete there, causing Aurora to faint, and now she would remain unconscious for the rest of her life. When Stephen sees the condition of his only daughter, he becomes very sad. Therefore, Maleficent controlled the prince to bring him to the kingdom. Maleficent had already reached the room with the prince, 
where Aurora was kept. Despite the prince trying to kiss Aurora, Aurora does not wake up, which makes Maleficent understand that perhaps the prince is not Aurora's true love. Now, no one could pick up Aurora, and Maleficent, feeling sad, goes to Aurora and kisses her on the forehead and starts crying there because now, no matter what happens, perhaps Aurora will never wake up. Maleficent leaves after kissing Aurora on the forehead, realizing that Aurora's true love was Maleficent. She had befriended Maleficent from the heart and had loved her. That's why when Maleficent kissed her, her curse was broken. Now Aurora was telling Maleficent that no matter what happens, she would stay with her. Maleficent had removed the boundaries around her magical forest, and now after everything was fine, the magical forest was back in play. Maleficent had honored Aurora with great respect and made her the new princess of the entire place. After which, every creature in the magical forest started living very happily. Everything becomes much better than before, and our story also ends here.